Welcome to another Clean Core tutorial. In this video, we're gonna talk about calendars, more specifically, group calendars. What are they, what are they used for, and how to get started building your own group calendar. In this video, we're gonna show you the standard calendars, which is what you're looking at here. And if you wanna build a group calendar, this is what it's going to look like. Some people prefer this calendar just because it looks a little bit more professional. It gives you a little bit more information over here, and it's really based on personal preference. But if you want your calendar to look like this, you're gonna to need to first create a group and then a calendar within that group. So without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna go back to our Clean Core account. And as I said before, we're gonna get started with building a group first. So navigate over to calendars, calendar settings, you can see here, we just have our standard calendars. We can create as many standard calendars as we want, but in this instance, we are going to create a group calendar. To do that, we're gonna click add group. This is where you give a name for your group, a description, and then the calendar group URL. You're gonna to need to find one of these that isn't already taken. Really, this doesn't matter. You could put a bunch of random digits in here and you'll be good to go. Click save, and now we have our group. The next step is to create a calendar within this group. So let's do that. We're gonna click new calendar. And right here, we have a lot of settings. Now this is somewhat similar to the regular calendar setup where we have steps one, two, and three. Before finalizing the setup with this calendar, some of this stuff is going to be slightly different, especially this section right up here at the top, appointment distribution. Group calendars are really cool because you can optimize for availability, you can optimize for equal distribution, and as the name implies, you can have multiple users assigned to a group calendar. For example, if you have two employees that can take calls or go do walkthroughs, and you want them to be scheduled based on their availability, meaning that if a client or a prospect wants to book a call on this specific date at this specific time, it's going to show the availability of both of those users. That's just one example. Let's go ahead and add a user here. We're gonna select Chuck Norris as our test user. And what's really cool about this too is you can select a priority. So if you have two, three, five, or 10 users that are attached to this group calendar, you can assign a priority here. From the dropdown, we have Custom, Zoom, and Google Meet. If we left it to Custom, we could tell the system where this meeting will be taking place whether that's a Zoom link, whether that's an address at a coffee shop, whatever the case, we can put what we want here. Or if you use Zoom for your meetings, you can select this and we'll have you log into your Zoom account. There we go, you can see we have the ability to connect Chuck Norris's Zoom account at this time. We're gonna leave that at custom. Now, if I didn't want it to optimize for availability, I could click this over here. And if I had another user for this account, I would have the option to do what is called a round robin sequence. And with that round robin sequence, I now have the ability to send one appointment to Chuck and one to Sarah, or two to Chuck and then one to Sarah, or one to Chuck, two or three to Sarah. I can choose the round robin sequence I want to. The point is, as the appointments come in, they will be given to either Chuck or Sarah based on the variables that I set. All right, moving down the calendar, you can give your calendar a name here. We're gonna call this one group calendar name, group calendar description. And then here you can see this was the URL that we placed before for the group. And now we get to enter the URL for the calendar itself. So I'm just gonna enter test group calendar. You can see that one is available. I can adjust the appointment title and color if I want, just like the standard calendar, save and continue. And now the rest of these steps should look very familiar. We can set our slot duration, interval, buffer, appointments per slot and per day, as well as our scheduling notice settings right here. Right at the bottom, we can tell the calendar what days we do and do not want to be available, as well as the times that we want to show available on our calendar. Once these are set, we can move to step three, which is the confirmation step. Again, we can use a custom calendar form if we would like, or we can leave it at the default. Use a sticky contact if we'd like, if we have repeat visitors so that they don't have to pre-fill in their information, or it will pre-fill their information. They don't have to type it in manually each time. And then if we scroll down, we have notifications. We can send emails right here, which is the default, and we can choose who receives the notifications. Sometimes it's nice as the assigned user to receive the notifications of new booked appointments. 
I also like to select this option here to allow Google Calendar to send the invitation or updates via email to the attendees. Again, feel free to read through the rest of this, but for now, I'm just gonna click complete. And there we go. Now we have our group and our group calendar. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. There you go. Now you'll notice there's nothing before this calendar or after, it's simply the calendar because we are on the standard calendar link. We could then take this calendar and embed it on our website or embed it on a CleanCore landing page so that we can come up with something more like this. We have a nice header section here, the calendar element itself, and then a basic footer. Now this is completely optional. You could certainly send this plain calendar link to your prospects, to your leads, to your applicants, to your professional network, to anyone that needs to book a calendar appointment with you. You could send this to them. And you can see right here where these settings show up on the calendar. So now if you need to go back to the calendar settings and adjust these, you can do so accordingly. Make sure that it says what you want it to say on the end result. So that's it. Hopefully now you know what groups are, you know what group calendars are, and you know some of the differences between a group calendar and a standard calendar. That's all I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.